Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead on and pray a sin. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Just thanking you, Lord, for these opportunities to share a word with your people. I ask that you would lead me and guide me and help me to speak on this message. And that you administer to those who are listening. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. It's a beautiful morning this morning. And today I want to just talk a little bit about excuses. Because we have a lot of people that's making up a whole lot of excuses when it comes to them giving their lives to Jesus Christ. And I remember when I was living outside of God and I was dug deep in sin. I was dealing drugs and doing drugs. I was caught up in alcoholism and I was caught up deep in fornication. And God would send people into my life to witness to me about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He would set up all kind of little scenarios where I would be placed in a position with people that believed in Jesus Christ. And God would use these people to minister to me, to witness to me. And I would always come up with every excuse in the book, excuse after excuse after excuse as to why I couldn't give my life to Jesus Christ. There was a darkness in my heart that was keeping me from submitting myself to the Lord. And uh, I was dug deep in dark sins. I was chasing after money. I was chasing after women. I was dealing drugs and doing drugs. And at that time in my life, when God would put me in these positions and, and send people into my life to witness to me, God, giving my life to God seemed like the most lamest thing that I can do at that time. But God, in His mercy, would continually send people into my life and put me in positions where I would get around certain people where they can witness to me and try to persuade me to give my life to Jesus Christ. But I would always come up with every excuse in the book. There was this time that God got a hold of the heart of one of my best friends. He was born again by the Spirit of the living God. And God would use him to try to persuade me to give my life to Jesus. My best friend was born again by the Spirit of God and God was using him to try to convert me. But I would always come up with every excuse in the book. And I was in love with my self-centered, sinful life. And I didn't want nothing to do with God. I was dug deep in sin. And um, God in His mercy would always try to reach out to me. He was persistent in my life to try to reach out to me, to put me in circumstances where people can witness to me, where, where people can talk to me about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God is a merciful God. The Bible says in 2 Peter that he is long suffering with man, not willing that no one should perish and that all should come to repentance. The heart of God is salvation. His deepest desire of his heart is that all of humanity would be saved. So he is persistent in people's lives to send people into their lives to witness, to send preachers into people's lives to witness to them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is persistent in setting up situations and putting people in positions where they can get around certain people that will witness to them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is God's way of trying to persuade them to make that choice to repent. Because the Bible says, without repentance, all shall perish. And repentance is 
something that we do. It's a command from God. It's the decision that we have to make. And God will come into our lives and try to persuade us to make that decision to repent. Our first act of repentance is making that decision to realize that we are a sinner and that we are in need of God and that we call out on the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, this is not just an intellectual call out, but this is a call out of the heart. This is not a call out of the mouth. The Bible, God says a mouth says anything. God doesn't want your mouth. God wants your heart. There's a lot of people that honor God with their mouths, but their hearts are far from him. God desires that all humanity repents and he will be persistent in sending uh, preachers into people's lives to begin to witness to these people to try to persuade them to repent. And God is such a merciful God. He delights in mercy over judgment. So he is persistent and to persuade people to come to him. He'll put he'll try over and over and over and over to try to persuade a person to give their lives to him because he desires to save humanity. The Bible says that Jesus Christ has not come to destroy people's lives, but he came to save them. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but that they should have everlasting life. God desires to save humanity more than what humanity desires to be saved. And in his desire to save humanity, he will put preachers in people's lives to try to persuade them and witness to them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is a merciful God and he longs to bring people into that relationship with himself. But in order for that to happen, people have to make that decision to repent. They have to give their lives to Jesus. They got to be willing to pick up their cross. They got to come to that understanding that Jesus Christ bore the cross and shed his blood for us so that we can be redeemed. And when, we, when, when there is a recognition of that, we have to be willing to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. We have to be willing to deny ourselves. And it all comes with a decision uh, of saying, I want you, God. I want to give my life to you. And you make that decision to get into the word of God, to get into prayer and submit yourself, humble yourself because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And this is the problem with a lot of people right now. They have a, so much pride in their heart and they are not willing to humble themselves. And in order for us to be exalted into a position of relationship with God, we got to be willing to humble ourselves and God will pour out his mercy. God will pour out his grace. Our lives will fall into a place of obedience to God. And the Bible says that God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. And without the Holy Spirit, no one belongs to Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 3 that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again. The flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You must be born again by the spirit of the living God or you do not even belong to Jesus Christ. And in order to be born again, you have to be willing to repent. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, Repent and be converted so that your sins may be blotted out and times of refreshing will come from the Holy Spirit of God. Once God converts you through repentance, God will begin to refresh in your life. He will begin to pour His Spirit into your life and He will bring you alive on the inside. God wants to bring you alive on the inside. But in order for God uh, to, to bring you to life, you got to be willing to submit and humble yourself 
in repentance and make that decision to give your life to Jesus Christ, to submit to the word of God, to get into the prayer, to not play no games, to know that God is a God of goodness and he's a God of severity. And he will come over and over and over again and try to persuade you to give your life to him. But there will come a time where God will stop tugging. Well, God will stop pulling. He'll stop sending people into, uh, into your lives to persuade you to give your life to him. And that's why it's so important for us to lay hold of this opportunity that we got. The most important decision that we have to make on, on, in our entire lives uh, is to give our lives to Jesus Christ. So that we can be saved from the judgment of God. Because everyone who dies without Christ is going to spend the eternity in hell. And when it comes to making this decision to giving your lives to Jesus. So many people have excuse after excuse after excuse. People have excuses as to why they don't read their Bible. People have excuses as to why they don't pray. People have excuses as to why they don't witness for Jesus Christ. People have excuses as to why they don't fellowship with other believers. Excuse after excuse after excuse. The other day we was making some signs in the yard because we was about to go out and street preach. And they had this guy that came walking the driveway and started talking to us. And it's a guy that I never saw in about 10 years. And we got to talking and he was doing a lot of cussing. And it was vexing my spirit and I, I was restraining myself from saying something. And he just kept talking and talking. And then he got to talking about um, his bike. And how he wanted to fix his bike up so he can ride women on his bike. And what he was doing is he was being kind of perverted. So that gave me the opportunity to start talking about fornication. And when I started talking about fornication, I can see something in him that knew that what he was doing was wrong. I can see something in him that knew that God was real and the life that he was living was wrong. And I continually talked to him about Jesus and I was witnessing to him and, and just, just persuading him uh, to, that, uh, about giving his life to God and um, you know, making that decision so that he can be saved from the judgment of of God, but he was coming up with every excuse in the book. He had excuse after excuse after excuse. And one of the main things that I discerned that was keeping him from making that decision was his reputation. He had a reputation with people and he was so concerned about what she said or he said or what he says and what she says. And that's one of the greatest things that keeps a person from giving their life to God, their reputation. The pride of their own heart as who they are in this world will keep a person from submitting their life to Jesus Christ because they so worried about what he says and she says. And he made excuse after excuse after excuse. And God is long-suffering. He desires people to be saved. And God will put people in a position where they can get witnessed to. And God put that guy in a position in our lives so that we can witness to him and talk to him about the gospel of Jesus Christ. But yet he rejected. He came up with every excuse in the book. And this is what we got going on right now. We have a lot of people that are just coming up with every excuse in the book as to why they don't want to give their lives to God. But yet on the inside, they have an inner sense that this is the thing, the decision that they need to do. This is, this is what they have to do in life. But yet they continue to restrain themselves because of the pride of life. If a person is not willing to lay down their pride and humble themselves and submit themselves, it takes an act of humility to realize, wow, I don't want this life no more. I, don't, I, I, I want to give my life to God. 
I want to separate from the world. Uh, I, I don't want to keep living a life of defeat, doing the same thing over and over and over again. And there's no success. There's no progress in my life. I want to give my life to God until they come to that decision to humble themselves. They will be trapped in their inner prison of pride. And that pride will keep them from the mo making the most greatest decision that they would ever make in their entire life. And everybody has a lot of excuses when it comes to them giving their lives to Jesus Christ. And what I want to do is I want to read you a scripture in Luke chapter 14 this morning. And I'm going to start off at, at verse 16. And uh, I want to ask you to just bear with me because I'm going to read this whole passage. And Jesus is going to show us three of the main excuses as to why people don't give their life to Jesus Christ. And I'm going to start off in verse 16. It's Luke chapter 14. I'm going to start off at verse 16. It says, Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to the master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed, and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Now pay attention to this next verse, verse 24. It says, For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. And this parable right here is Jesus Christ giving us an illustration of what happens when he sends his servants out into the world to witness to them about the gospel of Jesus Christ and to invite them into the kingdom of God. That people have excuse after excuse after excuse. And Jesus says, for I say to you that none of those men who are invited shall taste my supper. And we see that there comes a time where Jesus will pull back and stop trying to persuade these people to give their lives. Um, and to surrender their lives unto him. And uh, Jesus says that they will not taste his supper. And we notice that they got three excuses. And I want to kind of look at these three excuses and just kind of expound on it a little bit. The first excuse is in verse 18. It says, but they all with one accord began to make excuses the first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. I have bought a piece of ground, property, stuff, the cares of this life. The cares of this life is keeping people from making the most important decision that they will ever make on the face of uh, on the face of the entire planet. When it comes to making a decision, the most important decision on the face of our, on the face of this planet is giving your life to Jesus Christ. And people are allowing their everyday lifestyles like property, tending to houses, uh, tending to farming, I mean, all kind of things. People are caught up in making their cars look so pretty that they have no concerns about God. They put all these rims on their cars. 
I mean, they dress their cars up so good. They they spend all kind of money on houses and, and, and land and they they tend to their houses. They tend to their lands. They tend to their cars and they give no thought about eternity. And when you when God sends somebody into their life to witness to them, a lot of times they just reject God because they so caught up in the cares of this life. I mean, even children right now are so caught up in, in this gaming stuff, these video games, that when you go to talk to them about Jesus Christ and talk to them about God, God just seems so unattractive. The things of this world are satanically designed to make God unattractive. And this is why a lot of people do not come to Jesus. Let's look at verse 19 it says and another said i have bought five yoke of oxen and i am going to test them i ask you to have me excused this is talking about jobs work i mean people are exhausting all their energies into the busyness uh, of jobs and they just have no time to give their lives to Jesus. They have no time to give their time to the word of God. They have no time for prayer. They are caught up in the busyness of work and they just have no time for God. I mean, so many people are making so much money. You got offshore workers. I mean, you got people at Walmarts. I mean, they just caught up in the busyness of work and they just have no time for Jesus. And a lot of people are making so much money right now that the love of money has got a grip on their hearts. And the Bible says, what is it that a man profits the whole world, but yet he forfeits his soul? And this is what we got right now. We have a lot of people that are profiting out of the things of the world, but yet they are forfeiting their souls. They are so caught up in work. They are so caught up in their jobs. They are so caught up in making money. And the love of money has got a grip on their hearts. And money does something to a person. It makes you feel powerful. It puffs you up with pride. It gives you the ability to get anything you want. And it does something to you on the inside. I remember when I was living outside of Jesus and I was making all kind of money, I felt some type of way on the inside. I felt kind of puffed up. And this is what money does to you. It gets a grip on your heart and it makes you feel like somebody. This is why Jesus says it is easy for a, a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And this is what we got right now. We got so many people that are profiting off the things of the world. They so caught up in their jobs and work and, and money has got a grip on their hearts and they are forfeiting their souls to eternity. We think about um, all these NFL players and the basketball players. I mean, they're making all this money, and yes, they in the spotlight. Uh, I mean, yes, they got a name for themselves in the kingdom of the world, but they have no name for themselves in the kingdom of God. People are out here building their earthly kingdoms and they're giving no thought about the kingdom of God. And because of their, their, their own occupations and the things that they do, they are forfeiting their souls for eternity. They are going to spend an, an, an eternity in hell because they are consumed with the busyness of jobs. And this is what God is showing us. And we can expound on it on all kind of different ways. But our Lord is showing us that work, jobs, simple things in life. You, you would think it's, it's the hard things, but it's the simple things in life that are giving people every excuse as to why they cannot give their lives to God. They just don't have the time. They are just consumed with their jobs. They consumed with work. And they just don't have time to read their Bible. They don't have time to go to church. They don't have time to pray. And they are going to stand before the judgment seat of God when they die. And God is going to call in their account all the times they had uh, a chance to give their lives to Jesus Christ. And they rejected it. 
They rejected eternity so that they can live uh, in the, comfortable, uh, the, uh, the comforts of life here on earth. They exhausted all their energy into all, all their jobs so that they can build an earthly kingdom and they gave no thought about the kingdom of God. So they're going to stand on that day of judgment and they're going to hear the words, depart from me, you who practice iniquity. Now we're going to get to the last one is verse 20. It says, still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. And he couldn't come because of his wife. This is talking about relationships right here. You know, a lot of people are not coming to God because of family, because of children. Uh, a lot of people are not coming to God because of what they think other people are going to think about them. They're so concerned about what this person says, that person says. What are my friends going to say if I give my life to God? What are my friends going to say if I begin reading the Bible and going to church? So many people are coming up with every excuse in the book because of relationships. Relationships are, are pulling people away from the Word of God. Relationships are pulling people away from prayer. Many people right now are unequal yoked to unbelievers and they wonder why they are not progressing in their lives. These wrong relationships will pull you away from your walk with Jesus Christ. These wrong relationships will keep you from giving your life to Jesus Christ. Why? Because of pride. Reputation. People are so worried about their reputation. They're worried about what he says and she says. They're so concerned about their family life, their children, and they're not giving no thought about Jesus Christ. And Satan will use people to influence people. People influence people. We've seen that in the story of Samson. Samson was an anointed man of God that was used by God to do a mighty work. He killed thousands of Philistines and Satan hated him. And, and Satan tried to stop him over and over and over again. And he couldn't do nothing until he found this girl named Delilah. And once he found Delilah, he put Delilah in Samson's life. And before you know it, Samson fell away from God, got his hair chopped off. He got his eyes gouged out and he got put in prison. He became a captive of the enemy because he allowed himself to be around the wrong person. And this is what's going on right now with a lot of people right now. They're wondering why they're not progressing in their life. They wonder why they're not moving forward in their life with Jesus Christ. It's because they are surrounding themselves with the wrong people. And these people are influencing their lives to go in the wrong direction. And they are coming up with all kinds of excuses right now. But there will be no excuses on the day of judgment. For the Bible says that all the secret things uh, 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 of man will be brought into account. God will call out every time we had a chance to give our life to Jesus Christ. God will call out every time that he sent somebody into our lives to persuade us. To stop doing this, to stop doing that, to give our life to Jesus, to get into the Word of God, to leave that person alone, to separate from that place, to stop going over there, stop going over here, stop going around that person. Because all them things were drawing you and keeping you from giving your life to Jesus. And it's going to be all brought into account on the Day of Judgment. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Let's not make no excuses of giving our lives to Jesus. If we have not given our lives to God, let's just go ahead and submit and repent. And if we are walking with God and, and we are around wrong people, let's separate from these people. Let's get away from these people. Let's be attentive in our walk and not let our jobs be one of the main excuses as to why I can't read my Bible so much, why I can't pray. Let's not fall into these excuses that Jesus Jesus reveals to us in Scripture. Um, and let's give our lives in total submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Let's get into prayer. Let's get into to the Word. Let's witness for Jesus everywhere we go. Let's keep our mind state 
on Christ. The Bible says that Jesus will keep us in perfect peace for those who keep their minds stayed on him because they trust in him. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I just wanted to speak this little word to us about excuses. So y'all stop making excuses out there and y'all have a blessed day today.